Welcome to Commissioner Show, Episode 4. We're going to be reviewing the awards and previewing 2023 as we're heading in that direction now. I'm joined by Brody Livingston of the Eastern Extreme. And yeah, let's get into it. So last Wednesday, we had the awards come out. And it may come to a surprise for some, but Seth Denmark pretty much just cleaned up the awards. We had seven people, uh, six representatives, one from each team plus our announcer that voted on the awards and no fan voting this year. So uh, I think it came to a surprise to some that Seth really did this well. But uh, keep in mind, it was regular season only. And uh, yeah, so we got Brody here and he was one of the two. I would say like favorites for the MVP award. It was pretty much the whole season. We were like trying to see who's going to come out on top. They're like neck and neck. Brody kind of started ahead and then Seth really picked it up second half of the season. So Brody, when you came to the, uh, the award ceremony that day, did you expect to win the MVP or like, what were your expectations? Um, no, uh, I played with Seth. So when me and Seth, we, me, uh, we had a league. And uh, MVP literally was about 50-50, me and him, every single year. So I kind of figured it was it was kind of a toss-up. I knew he was winning Cy Young. I knew that I wasn't winning that. That's why I said when I went up there, I said, I hope I'll be up here again. But, you know, 50-50 shot, honestly, flip a coin. <laughs> yeah. So as for the voting, if we want to get into it, like I know I voted for you for MVP. You, you voted for yourself. I did. Um, other than and, that, and I, I uh, Joey told me that he voted for me. Joey voted for you. So that means Seth, Carson, and Luke all voted for them for Seth. And then yes. it come down to uh, for the announcer, and I guess he voted for Seth. So, I mean, honestly, I was like gonna vote for Seth the entire time, and then I just had like like I just went with my gut. I don't know why it just felt like it felt right, pretty much. So. We did this right after the regular season ended. So, um, yeah, so we don't really factor in playoffs. But that last series of the year, I think, really determined it all. There was a graphic in the video um, before the MVP was announced, and it was hits, average, head-to-head record, and then um, ERA, which I think you had the edge on two and Seth had the edge on two. Um but yeah, so he kind of had the pitching edge. You had the hitting edge, and then head to head, Seth won that. That was kind of my thinking. Um, on to another award, Silver Slugger. Did you feel like you were sort of robbed in this one, or it was kind of a weird award? I would say. Um, I'm gonna be honest. I I joined so when I got added to that awards voting committee because I was representing uh, the extreme. I looked at it and I was shocked that my name was on that list, to be honest. Um, I voted for Evan, actually, um, just because I think that I mean, I think I, I honestly I would have voted myself last. I think I was probably least deserving. So, no, I don't think I was robbed. Well, from my voting side, I I think it was Evan Mason and Brody were the three finalists. And like it was another gut thing for me, like Mason just felt like the silver slugger. The only reason I didn't vote for Evan was because he was sort of like, I felt like he kind of had a stat padding towards the end of the year against me. Yeah. Like that series wasn't, I mean, it wasn't completely, but obviously it wasn't like legit, legit competition. So um, I would say that's why I went with Mason and congrats to him. He's like the second ever winner, which I didn't even realize. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's, yeah. that's pretty cool. Seth also won Cy Young. I don't really think that was a, I was. I think that. I think that was unanimous, wasn't it? No, I, I can. I'll pull it up and check. I. I mean, if any of the big awards were going to be unanimous, it was going to be that one for sure. I mean, me and him had talked about it um, before it happened, and we like we both agreed that he was yeah. easily the Cy Young winner. So Cy Young, he had four votes. Brody had two, and Carson had one. Uh. Okay. And then Silver Slugger, it was 4-3 Mason. And here's a here's a funny thing. So rookie of the year was actually tied, but MVP went to Seth. So like Yeah. I, yeah. I had to give it to Seth just because like that doesn't really make sense. I think it was 
I think Seth actually switched up his vote on that one. See, but, here's the thing. So for so in our league as well, when we were both rookies, I won rookie of the year and he won MVP. So yeah. I always made that like a rule, like you can't you can't do that again. It was just so bad. Mm-hmm. So I get that. And then as for uh like the most unanimous awards, it was we had gold glove to yeah. Seth was the most with like only one vote to Carson and then manager of the year for Carson. Um, most improved was actually a close one. That was, was improved. Zach Koss and Carson were the two candidates and Carson uh, won one vote. I, vo- um, I voted my boy, Zach, obviously. Zach, Zach's interesting because he's most yeah. improved on the pitching side, but then yeah, not, a, not at the plate. Yeah. Hitting's a disaster this year for him. But um, yeah. So last award was, I think, most clutch, which was, I think, the closest one. It was actually tied. So then we like re voted and we had Brody because like quantity over quality and like all the clips as well. Um, we just, I don't know. It was just Brody had a lot more clutch moments. So now, I mean, 2022 season's pretty much wrapped up. We're moving on. Next week, next couple of weeks, we're going to have a lot of videos from you with uh, the Western Wood Football Classic and then like the content with Bauer and Sim. And uh, then we're going to move into the draft, all that kind of stuff. So it's next season's coming quick. And I mean, to start it off, like what changes do you want to see just as a member of the league, like field changes, rule changes? Like, what do you want coming this next season? Um. Definitely. Okay. So I, I'll kind of break it up into bits. Um, unanimously, both hitting and pitching, I think there needs to be a smaller zone because there were times as a hitter where I was like, I can't, I, I can't hit an outside pitch that's low or that's at like, you know, right here on my neck. Um, and then as a pitcher, it just kind of felt cheap when I would have like a, a riser that would like skid the grass and like just hit barely like the bottom of the zone. And it just felt cheap um, mm-hmm. sometimes. Yeah, and I'll uh, I'll add to that. Like we we actually it's already complete. Like we reached out to Mid Atlantic with ball shout out to them and got the plans for the zone. We like the one we saw at US. It's barely bigger than that one, but like hopefully it it should be fun. I think our pitchers in our league are skilled enough to hit that zone. And uh from what I've done, what I've I've been practicing on it, it's just fine. And I think it's gonna help out both the hit hitting and pitching quite a bit this year so definitely and then I'll, I'll kind of piggyback off that and i think that i definitely think that the speed limit needs to get lowered um and i know that you and me have separately talked about it outside of outside of that but but uh it's i mean it's ridiculous to kind of again kind of feels cheap when like you got not as skilled players you know and i'm not trying to like knock anyone out but like when you have like barrett per se or Declan and you know you're throwing 79 which you put up the graphic 105 MLB like I think I think they're a confident seven six or seven guys that I could say who could actually hit 79 80 um but I think I think low 70s to like 75 would probably be good yeah we also have plans for that and we'll reveal those soon okay uh so another another like field change I think I'm a lefty so it doesn't apply to me but left field and I know there's not really anything you can do but like there's got to be like a rule change or something because like I just remember Carson hitting like a bomb into the tree and it didn't count and I was like that's BS or or not again like against you guys he hit two into the tree those definitely should have been home runs exactly Luke that's like the no one's talking about that but Luke literally would have hit two out that put him up in like the first couple innings of both game one and two in the playoffs, but it like keeps knocked down. Yeah, exactly. Same thing with uh, another big one is Joey when Bryson caught it off the tree, which I think that rule needs to be changed too because I think that's that was I think it, I think I think it's exciting because I think that that was just such a random play and Bryson even tells me <laughs> I didn't even know where the ball was just fell into my hand and it was out. So that was it's it's kind of funny. So I honestly like maybe just keep it, but like. Yeah, definitely like left field needs to have like a rule change, I think. Yeah, left field needs to be cleaned up. As for the field itself, uh, I mean, Christmas is around the corner. We're hoping uh, we're getting some good gifts for that. Like I've been hopefully 
like we got the funding to do so and uh, make the field look a lot more professional. We have some uh, pretty cool ideas. I think cameras and stuff like we're going to get hopefully behind home plate. We're trying to get a professional camera that like it's hard because we use the iPhone and obviously that's not our main camera angle. But like when action happens, you got to flip to that. And uh, we have to zoom out. That's why we use the iPhone, just because like the pillars kind of on the announcer's booth and then there's the field. So you have to do the 0.5 filter. Um, so it's hard to find a camera that like can go that wide as well. But I think we did. And hopefully that should be coming up soon. But yeah, yep. now we're going to move on to a new thing. It's going to be like New Year's resolutions for each team. We did a post on this a couple years ago. and. I think the most memorable part was I think the Eastern extreme just said help. And that was before they got that guy, Brody. And they obviously, (laughs) but I would argue you could pretty much caption it the same thing for the upcoming season because Brody needs help. So we'll start with them. And I mean, being the captain, what do you, what's your new year's resolution for the extreme? Um, I mean, I'm not going to lie. We're going to need someone who's who's about as good as like as like a Bryson at the number four pick or an Evan. Um, or honestly, like like just a pitcher. Like I think maybe not, no, uh, no, we need help. Like, like we don't we don't have a whole lot of hitting. Um, and I think the pitching is is iffy. It's it's on and off. I mean, it, it goes, it goes how I go. I think, um, that's kind of going to be my, my job as a captain is I'm going to need to make sure to, uh, keep the ship, uh, alive. Yeah. Um, I mean, I could see you guys trading up to like, you, you have the Cougars in front of you. Right. And obviously this draft class, I don't know if you guys know this, but like, it's pretty unknown. I don't know how many good pitchers there are, how many good hitters, like, that's why we're having the draft combine in a couple of weeks. And really that's going to determine a lot because the extreme just need anyone. So like if you could get up to the third pick, maybe the second, like maybe a redo Umar in the fourth pick for the third pick or something that could possibly like you could get someone better there, but I mean, who knows? Like it depends how good this draft class is, how deep it is like last year's. I mean, the only problem uh, that lies with that is that um, is that we only have three guys right now. Um, so like during free agency, I mean, like I I was in everyone, like you know, like I was asking for phone numbers, like out of everyone. I mean, I was I was desperate. Um, I mean, who do you reach out? Porter. I reached out to I think seven dudes, eight dudes, something like that. Dylan, like those Jay- were Aiden. Jake. Aiden, yeah, uh, pretty much everyone, honestly. Um, talked to other captains, wanted to see what was a big guy that I wanted so bad was Braden Lewis because I need the pitching so bad. <laughs> I need it. Like, I mean, we'll probably see Reed Umar on the bump um, this time, like uh, this season. Um, like, if, if exactly, <laughs> if, if we get like a, if we get in a bad spot, Reed's coming in and, um, it's just tough because I don't think that we can trade anyone right now just because we only have three guys. So if we trade away someone, then we only have two. And then it's like, it'd be yeah. tough. I mean, I mean, it's interesting though, because I feel like you could, you mentioned Brady, Lu- Brady Lewis. Like, I think you could get him for sure. Uh, I know Joey's doesn't really, if he has the first pick, he doesn't really have much use for him. I feel like. So, uh, I don't know. I would definitely stay in talks there, but, um, yeah, moving on. I think we'll go to the Wolves next. Like from an outsider's perspective, I try to think of something. I can't really think of much. Like maybe just contact or like I consistent. Uh, I think I think your guys' one two punch is fantastic. I think your guys' weakness will be your third guy or your fourth guy. Um I think I think if you don't I think you just why we clicked so well for the extreme, why we went on that nine and zero run is if you look at it, we all played a part in every single game. Like all, all three of us were in there. Um, so you can't really have like a two man squad. Like that's why like 
if you look back, like the Panthers, they right. they struggled because their third guy wasn't catching up. And then they did good when it was the two of them. And then when Aiden started clicking, then they were the best team in the league. Exactly. So yeah. I think that's, that's what I would guy. say. Yeah. Um, I would say consistency that, from your third guy. That's, yeah. That would be the wish. Because, I mean, we're going to have Porter and Jake Tucker are probably going to be the two Absolutely. candidates. See if Porter can turn back the clock a little bit. And like, yeah, exactly. I mean, both of them, right? Like, in, like, the playoffs, like, both of them had really nice swings. Like, in my opinion, like, there were some oh, swings. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's not a bad thing. Like, I was like, okay, yeah. No, Porter, Porter, I felt like, was, like, yeah. every single pitch I'd throw by him, I was like, it was my heart was racing. Like this better not get taken out. Those were some, I say violent swings. Like he was swinging hard at the ball. He looked like yeah. he was tracking it. Okay. So what numbers are everyone rocking on your team? Uh, I'm going to stick with eight. Probably. I don't really know Porter like from experience. I think he was like some, I don't know, some crazy number. Then Luke will probably be, I think five as normal. Um, but yeah, I, Jake Tucker for like I don't think there's really gonna be a conflict. If if there is, we'll have to figure that out. But uh, yeah, yeah. So let's move on to uh to uh the altitude and this team. I think they just need consistency, like from anything, whether it's pitching, they need consistent strikes, hitting, they need their bats are so up in the air, like. A lot of talent. It's just they need to put it all together. I think Joey will bounce back this year, um, hopefully, just for their sake. And then they have the number one pick. So I think it it can be a dangerous team if it all clicks. And I think consistency is going to be the key for that. Yeah, I think I think what they need to go for is obviously when you look at like the draft, you're trying to go for the best available player. But in my opinion, if they want to try and like go for the best available hitter, I mean, the pitching, like like you said, like the pitching is there. The hitting is there. They just need to be consistent. Like, and not even like the whole team. Like, I mean, like if Evan even does like better, barely, like barely than what he did last year and it's on and then their draft pick, it's on. I mean, that's a dangerous team. Like that would easily be like a team that could win the World Series. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, you, we talked about Brandon Lewis. They have him coming off the bench, basically, which is a yeah. great pitching option. They could get something out of him uh, if yeah. they need to. Moving on, let's go to the um, let's choose the Diamonds, and they've got. I mean, it should be an interesting year for them. They're coming off a World Series loss, I think fifth pick. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough for them to get back to that to that place. But I think the big thing for them is Matthew Sabla's hitting. And I think if he can step up and kind of how he was in the playoffs, but even more consistent, that's going to be huge. I think, yeah, I honestly, I think that that, and then I think just uh, how many games Seth is going to be able to actually go to. Um, I think, I think if he's not there, I mean, if you look at his pitching stats, I mean, no one, I think Kyler Smith was like the only other guy who actually pitched on that team. Um, Mm-hmm. So it's like if Seth isn't there, like that team doesn't have pitching, and you're not like you're not going to get like a, an absolute like maniac of a pitcher at the fifth pick. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I mean, it, it's dependent on how Matthew does, and it's dependent on how many games Seth plays in, and then if Dylan shows up too. Yeah, Dylan. Hopefully, this is the year he can. Yeah. Get some games in, and yeah. Um, let's move on to uh, what do we got left? Panthers and. Panthers and Cougars. Cougars. Uh, Panthers. So we're going to, you know, Panthers, obviously, I think they just need to find a third um, this season. I think Soren Etheridge has solidified himself as like a potential ace, I would say. So him, like, pitching is going to be elite. And, like, I mean, we don't know Aiden's future. I think he's going to become like sort of a manager. So uh, they have Declan and that might be their third. Uh, we'll see if that can work out for them. Hopefully uh, we'll see. I mean, in the draft as well, they just need to get a lot of depth. I feel like in uh, really hope Declan kind of steps up. Yeah. Yeah. So about, about Declan, a little story. Um, <laughs> I had a deal 
like 99.9% oh. done. Like he was on the extreme. I asked what number he wanted for the Jersey. And then I get a text from Aiden. Yo, he's actually going to go ahead and sign with the Panthers. And I was like, no way, no <laughs> way. Cause Barrett wasn't even going to be on the team originally. I was like, then I was like, well, I need a third. So <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and sign Barrett. But yeah, I think, I think Soren is just an ace stuck behind another ace. Um, I think someone to compare it to is like MLW Ryan Cratch behind Daniel Schultz. Um, I, th- I honestly think that, um, I mean, obviously that chemistry is there, so he's not going anywhere, but if he wants to pitch more, I think he, he would definitely think about joining another team. I'm not, I'm not saying the extreme obviously. Cause I mean, I think that rivalry is just too good to destroy. So, you know, yeah, that's going to be a fun matchup when you guys play. I mean, the, Soren's just, it's so weird. He's so, like, he doesn't really, it's just, like, effortless when he throws. And it's, like, yeah. strikes and it's just, I don't know how to explain it. It's just, it comes so easy for him almost. Yeah, but, he's um, a strike throw. Yeah, I mean, moving on, final team, the Cougars. I think they're the most interesting team in this league. They're going to be the biggest question mark, the most fun to watch. And it's led by Bryson Livingston, Mason Ferris. And they got Chase Udall, two picks. Like, they got a lot they can do here. I think their New Year's resolution would just be, like, consistency from one of the two pitchers or to cash in for, like, a, a massive trade. I feel like they just tra- they just traded away Luke Rose. But with the second and third picks, if they can't get an absolute stud, like, if they don't find – a stud in the draft market, any of that, or there's just one like trade the second and third picks for the first pick or something like that. Like I would really try to, I feel like they almost have too many assets with five players. So I don't know. I just feel like a Bryson Mason and someone else just like, I I don't know. I just feel like they have too many guys. So. Yeah. I, I honestly think that, um, I think the Cougars are the best team in the league. Um, I think they're the best team in the league. If they land only one of the two picks, I think if one of them lands, they're the best team. I think if two of them lands, I think they got a shot to go 15 and 0. Um, um, I think, I think they need to draft a pitcher. Um, obviously they need to draft an ACE um, because I don't think that, I don't think that Bryson and Mason can really hold up. And obviously I think that, I think that an ACE at the number two pick could also probably hit a little bit. Um, I mean, that's where Seth went he won MVP. Um, and I think, and I think that third pick, I mean, I think that you just need to draft someone who can, who can hit, or like you said, make a big trade because honestly, just the second and third pick can get about 90% of the league, probably more than that. Um, I mean, you can get anyone that you want. If you're, if you're the Cougars right now, you, you, or if you're a Cougars fan, like I know ECK sports is, you should be excited. (laughs) And, and honestly, I, I, I will say with confidence, not confidence, but. I would love to play for the Cougars. Like if I wasn't playing for the extreme, that would be a team I'd, I would want to play for. I mean, it's a completely like revamp team. It's going to yeah, be exactly. fun to watch. And yeah. really the only thing they're lacking is an ace. But what I would say to them is get Bryson, get Mason out practicing now. Like you got to with this smaller zone, like if you're struggling to hit that, that's going to be a long day. Like at the play at the, on the mound, you're going to be out there for a while. So get working. Like you got to really master that accuracy. I know Mason, like he he's, he's consistent. He just needs to be more like Mason just needs more experience. Um, but you saw him in the all-star game. I think it was a one inning scoreless frame. So, uh, yeah. I mean, just, they need an ACE. That's the only thing they're lacking. They can hit. It's going to be a dangerous team. And uh, I will say this from the Wolf side, I'd love to play them to open the season. That would be awesome. Probably not opening day, but like whenever we play, that's going to be a fun one for sure. Yeah, I honestly, I would honestly argue that I think you guys should be the last series of the season just because I know that Bryson wants, uh, Bryson's been, he's been chomping at the bit. Like he's, he's ready to go. Like he's, he's telling me how many, uh, how many homers he's hitting this year. He's aiming for 10. I know that. Um he he wants to he wants to prove himself. He thinks that he was he was he dropped down too low in the draft, and he thinks that he got snubbed uh, 
snubbed in the award show. So now he wants to kind of prove himself a little bit. So I know that he's definitely ready to go. Yeah. All right. Well, it's going to be a fun season for sure. Draft combine is coming up. And I mean, obviously that won't be posted until the draft itself, but like that's going to determine a lot. We should still have a lot of big news coming throughout the rest of the off season that, uh, I mean, it's probably the biggest off season ever, like we've been saying. So like stay tuned next week. We got another video back here, 4 PM Eastern time. And we'll see you then.